On this most solemn occasion, we are honoured to have among us distinguished members and guests, including the only remaining survivor here tonight, Mr. Arshak Badelian. We are also honoured to have with us tonight His Eminence Archbishop Aram Balyozian, Primate of the Armenian Apostolic Church of Australia and New Zealand, Professor Peter Balakian, Donald M. and Constant H. Reba, Professor of the Humanities in the Department of English and Director of Creative Writing at Colgate University, Dr. Donnelly Fries, Research Fellow at Deakin University, Mr. Victoria Sliteris, Honorary Consul General of the Republic of Lithuania, the Honourable Bronwyn Bishop, MP, Member for Mackella, representing the Leader of the Federal Opposition, the Honourable Dr. Brendan Nelson, MP, the Honourable Henry Tsang, OAM, Parliamentary Secretary to the Premier and assisting the Treasurer on Trade and Investment, representing the Honourable Morris Yema, MP, Premier of New South Wales. Mr. Chris Harcher, MP, Member for Terrigal, Shadow Minister for Water Utilities, Shadow Minister for Local Government, Shadow Minister for Housing, Shadow Minister for the Central Coast, representing the Leader of the New South Wales Opposition, Mr. Barry O'Farrell, MP. <coughs> representing the Honourable Joe Hockey, MP, Member for North Sydney, Shadow Minister for Health and Ageing, Manager of Opposition Business is Councillor Trent Zimmerman. Ms. Gladys Berejiklian, MP, Member for Willoughby, Shadow Minister for Transport, Shadow Mem Minister for Citizenship, representing Ms. Louise Marcus, MP, Federal Member for Greenway. The Hon Honourable Linda Voltz, MLC. Mr. Jonathan O'Day, Member for Davidson. Ms. Gillian Skinner, MP, Member for North Shore, Deputy Leader of the Opposition, Shadow Minister for Health, Shadow Minister for Science and Medical Research, and Shadow Minister for the Arts. The Honourable Reverend Fred Nile, MLC, and Mrs Nile. Mr Peter Draper, MP, Member for Tamworth. Father Parsel Susanyan, Armenian Catholic Church. Reverend Father Yomushakyan, Armenian Evangelical Church. Dr Stepan Kirkasharyan, AM, Chairperson, New South Wales Community Relations Commission, President of the Anti-Discrimination Board of New South Wales, and Mrs Kirkasharyan. Mr Varushan Iskenderian, Official Representative of the Republic of nogorno karabakh in Australia and Mrs Iskenderian, Mrs Eli Campos and Mrs Patricia Thompson representing the Cyprus community, councillors, honoured guests, reverend fathers and representatives of all Armenian Australian community organisations. Venerable survivor of the Armenian Genocide, Your Eminence, reverend fathers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are gathered to remember the more than one and a half million men, women and children who lost their lives in the Armenian Genocide. On April 24, 1915, the Ottoman Turks captured and murdered Armenian intellectuals, religious leaders and artists. This was the beginning of a series of crimes that defined the murderous campaign to exterminate all Armenians and to remove all trace of their 3,000 year existence. The plan to annihilate the Armenians had begun. Province by province, village by village, the Ottoman Turks took every opportunity to erase all memory of the Armenian people. They massacred the masses, destroyed their communities and burnt their churches, buildings and monuments. Ninety-three years on, I am sad to say that still this crime against humanity remains unrecognised and unpunished. The perpetrators of the crime are allowed to continue to denigrate the memories of those who were tortured, of those who were murdered, and of those few who survived. So yes, this year marks the 93rd anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, but more than that, it marks 93 years of denial. 93 years that have seen the destruction of the Assyrian and Pontian populations of Anatolia, the attempted extermination of the European Jewry, the annihilation of the Cambodians, the ethnic cleansing in Rwanda, and the dis displacement of indigenous African tribes from Darfur. 
in an attempt to bring together the voices of genocide. This year we have launched Genocide Outlook, a lecture bringing together the Armenian, Jewish and Darfuri experience. It is due to the awareness raised through projects like this that survivor communities can further promote the policies of recognition and help bring to an end the cycle of genocide. In today's society, however, we need to find even more engaging tools to reach the masses. Societal movements towards receiving news and information from less traditional mediums has seen a new development in the process of genocide education. Popular culture is the new front line in the war against genocide. Over the last decade, genocide awareness has increased internationally. Much of this is attributed to various authors, filmmakers, musicians and artists, all of whom have helped raise awareness of the genocide amongst those who ordinarily would not have been exposed to these crimes against humanity. Films like Ararat and Screamers, musicians like System of a Down and Charles Aznavour, and artists such as Arshil Gorki have all raised the consciousness of those who take for granted the very freedoms that we enjoy today. The horrors of genocide are overwhelming. Images of rape and torture can crush the modern sensibility. But genocide is more than a history of tragedy. It can also be the story of strength, compassion and generosity. One such example is the relief efforts documented in The Burning Tigris, the Armenian Genocide and America's response. Today we are fortunate to have amongst us Professor Peter Balakyan, world-renowned author of The Burning Tigris. In this book, Professor Balakyan explores the humanitarian effort undertaken by the United States. Interestingly, Professor Balakyan's own family history has played a critical role in Australia's involvement in the relief efforts during and post the Armenian Genocide. Professor Balakyan's great uncle, Haruchum Balakyan, who had migrated to Melbourne from Anatolia, was instrumental in forming a coordinated Australian-led humanitarian effort. Between 1915 and 1929, the Armenian Relief Fund of Australia provided humanitarian assistance to the victims of the Armenian Genocide. This relief effort was the first major humanitarian project in Australia led by various Christian denominations around the country. The Armenian Relief Fund of Australia set a precedent for support to areas and people in need that continues today. The Australian Institute for Holocaust and Genocide Studies has been actively researching the Armenian Fund, Relief Fund of Australia. Tomorrow, in a photo exhibition entitled An SOS from Beyond Gallipoli, a proud period of Australian history will be displayed to the wider Australian community for the first time. Our shared history makes it all the more important to push forward on our journey to eradicate genocide. More than a decade ago, the New South Wales Parliament joined this voice. In 1997, the New South Wales Parliament introduced legislation recognising and condemning the Armenian and all genocides. This year, the Australian Institute for Holocaust and Genocide Studies, Armenian Genocide Commemorative Lecture and Wreath Laying Ceremony will be held again at the New South Wales Parliament. Over the last year, in the face of continued pressure and denial by the Government of Turkey, the Parliaments of Chile and the Continental Parliament of South America have also joined the growing tide of legislative bodies that have come to recognise and reaffirm the historical truth of the Armenian Genocide. Recently, we have witnessed a new phase of genocide recognition. In Canada, the Armenian, Jewish and Rwandan genocides will all be part of the school curriculum. This means that all children will have the opportunity to learn about the evils of the past, but just as importantly, they will more easily recognise human rights violations today and learn what actions can and must be taken to stop such crimes. In a promising move, Turkey's economic and military threats have not prevented the Foreign Affairs Committee of the United States Congress from recommending that the full House of the United States Congress pass a resolution accurately referring to the events of 1915 as genocide. A full vote by the United States Congress is expected later this year. 
The Israeli parliament has also begun the process of recognition. Last month, the Knesset decided that a parliamentary committee will hold an unprecedented hearing regarding the recognition of the Armenian Genocide. Encouragingly, the United States Congress has also passed a bill to help shareholders avoid investing in state-sponsored genocide. This bill helps investors shed holdings in companies doing business in Sudan. This is just one example of how the conversation about genocide has changed. These days, our efforts are focused not only on our own experience of genocide, but also on our will to eradicate all genocide. We are focused on the need for the world to face the truth, to stop politicising the word genocide, and to take steps to not only recognise the Armenian genocide, but to have the courage and the will to stop the genocide in Darfur. One such step was the adoption of a United Nations Human Rights Council resolution introduced by the Armenian delegation on the prevention of genocide. The resolution calls for the strengthening and appropriate collaboration among existing mechanisms that contribute to the early detection and prevention of massive, serious and systematic violations of human rights, which if not halted, could lead to genocide. Recently as Australians, we have faced a different and more sordid part of our own history. After a decade of controversy, our government has apologised for the generations of pain and suffering inflicted upon Indigenous Australians by the laws and policies of former governments. Addressing the packed House of Representatives on February the 13th, Prime Minister Kevin Rudd apologised to Indigenous Australians for the stolen generation by saying, to the mothers and the fathers, the brothers and the sisters, for the breaking up of families and communities, we say sorry. And for the indignity and degradation thus inflicted on a proud people and a proud culture, we say sorry. We applaud the Australian Government for having come to terms with the dark chapter of its own history and hope that the Australian Parliament's apology to the Aboriginal people for past wrongs will set an example for and encourage the Government of Turkey to abandon its denialist policy and recognise the Armenian Genocide. Too often we hear that too long has passed, that after 93 years, Armenian communities worldwide should forget their demand for justice and we should reconcile. Forget our grandparents and great-grandparents, their brothers and their sisters. Forget those whom we have known and those who we did not have the opportunity to know. We should forget the evils bestowed on, upon our people and that we should forgive. Forgive those who do not seek forgiveness. Forgiveness can only begin with recognition. Thank you.